everybody, and welcome back to You Can't Win. This is Tom here, and I'm joined by Don as usual. And today we have returning unofficial third mic, Agile Tablet, back to talk about a variety of topics. There's been a number of requests on different things that listeners have wanted to uh, hear us talk about. So we're going to kind of go through that list and see if we can, can hit every one of those as best we can. Yeah, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I didn't think it had been that long, but uh, I guess it's been a little while, so nice to be back. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we haven't done an episode with you since we moved to the new place. That is true. That's true. And I know that because I just had to get all set up again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. For recording. Yeah. yeah. Cool. But yeah, yeah. Um, move is done. It's ancient history now. New place is nice. It's a beautiful summer. So yeah, things are going. Things are going pretty good. Cool. Um, how's how's your uh, how's your summer been, Donald? It's been okay. I don't know. Uh, it's been a bit crazy in the last few weeks because uh, my sister uh, sold one house mm-hmm. and then had like a sort of period in between where she had to then buy a new house and that right. wasn't like normally you wouldn't i mean in, in historically you wouldn't do that but now that's just the way the market works kind of thing uh where you just have to take what you can get and kind of buy where you can kind of thing yes um so she spent about two weeks in a hotel or so and then her family moved uh, in with us so there was like seven people in the house or something so for uh <laughs> oh, about two and a half three weeks or something like that so um wow that 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 to start with is kind of like, uh, you know, it gets pretty hectic and stuff. And for me, it. for me as a person that like, you know, sleeps in a bit and stuff, <laughs> um, <laughs> have, ha- having kids just uh, shrieking oh, man. at like 7 a.m. and stuff is, uh, oh, man. is different for me. So <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. It was nice though, to see them. And uh, but then it kind of compounded with what happened was uh, um, our septic system because we're in the country kind of thing, uh, basically ran into some sort of problems. And that took almost, uh, you know, a week or two of, you know, finally calling people in and emptying it and then getting repairs done where they had to tear up a whole bunch of the yard and stuff. So that was the thing where, like, we couldn't take, like, showers or laundry and stuff. Oh, my uh, gosh. just by coincidence happened when there were seven people in the house. And stuff, so. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> kind of like all, uh, yeah. So it was, it was, uh, you know, we had to be careful about being negative towards each other and stuff. So, you know. Yeah. Oh, wow. Did you, was there a way to go somewhere else? Like to someone nearby who would let you guys shower or anything like that? Or was it just kind of like toughen it out? It, it was one of those things where, uh, it was like on and off kind of thing where like we didn't. Oh, know it wasn't it was. the whole time. Well, but for me, it was cause sort of was because uh, it was one of those things where like something would work for a bit and then we didn't know if we should use it or not because we didn't yeah. know how broken it was. And then yeah, the, they came and what they did is actually like sort of like dug up the pipes that like drain out the water after it's been treated, whatever kind of thing or like. Mm-hmm gone through the process whatever and then uh emptied them because they were had filled with sand that had sand. Kind of like crept that had crept up from below kind of thing into the pipes uh-huh. and uh, so anyways it was like uh so you know you know like one day or something like that someone would get a shower or the next day or something like that like so i think that the like other people involved kind of they they uh maybe got a shower here or there or something like that but because of like you know, I kind of was like, okay, I'm not doing anything. And so I'm kind of like the last person that should be worried about getting a shower right now or something like that. I pretty much went like a week without one. And wow. uh, <laughs> I don't know. It was no, I, I was, I said, yeah. wow, because I was imagining how stinky I would be. I, sure. I like, I would just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, so. I, I don't think everyone is as bad as me. <laughs> Put it that way. Yeah. 
and and we were like we we it was like we shouldn't be flushing most of the time that was pretty gross yeah too. Like we were kind of being <laughs> careful about that and yeah so uh yeah <laughs> just uh, collecting turds in the <laughs> tom <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah i don't know pretty gross but uh um anyways but they moved into their new house uh, on wednesday and ah, okay. uh, you know they're all a lot of little no, things no septic problems stuff, there at the new place no the new place is in downtown toronto so it's like uh, oh they wouldn't have septic yeah. systems there they would have sewage <laughs> yeah. okay yeah yeah i don't know canada is not all at that backward level so <laughs> that, that is uh, not what i was implying okay <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. It's just uh, a lot of little things, kind of hectic, kind of stuff. It, it's been hard for like, uh, like I'm like ostensibly I'm supposed to be like working on writing stuff and that too, right? Kind of thing. Like oh that. boy. And uh, and you know we have the podcast and stuff too, obviously. So like, uh, I don't know. For some reason, like I mean, you know, I have the same length of time in a week as anyone else, but like it feels like for some reason that it just goes by so quickly like yeah that I, I don't even know what it's like you know what is it getting filled up with or anything I just, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Mm-hmm. so and i know what you mean yeah, yeah and and uh i don't know yeah so hopefully you know i'm kind of hoping over the next few weeks and stuff i get back into a more of a you know regular kind of schedule kind of thing getting out more and stuff so uh just a few weeks ago they you know, lifted lockdown mm-hmm. um, here just because we were like in the really bad third wave and they just got into like another stage here where they just, uh, they finally less do things. So I went and saw a movie last Friday or something like that. And, uh, um, you know, it, it's, it's starting to get back to normal where like you can what did you see? do things. Oh, I saw Black Widow. Oh, so, okay. Marvel. <laughs> so yeah. And, uh, just because the other two movies that were playing were like Boss Baby and Space Jam, so it's like, <laughs> you know, this this That's one some is the robust most... choices. Yeah, I would have gone with Boss Baby. I think. Yeah, yeah. But like, uh, so anyways, so you know, I'm starting to hope to, you know, get out more and do more kind of thing. But yeah. especially travel more. I don't know, like, uh, you know, sometime this fall, I'd like to visit you guys or something like that if I can. If if That'd that if that if that like you know. I know we're allowed to, but it's one of those things where I'm still kind of waiting to see what happens because, like, yeah, how crazy definitely. Things are, so yes, yeah, that's kind of how mm-hmm. I my my work is scheduled to um, start having people. Uh, they've already have been having quite a few people back in the office, but like, I think they're they're like we're really going to go back to normal. Date is in early September. Mm-hmm. And I definitely want to avoid that as much as possible. So <laughs> sure. I'm I'm just kind of waiting to see, like, is it going to, like, I don't know. Is it, are we going to have a bunch of spikes again and sure. lockdown again? You know, like, I have no idea how, how that's going to play out. So Well, I just saw, like, a graph for Florida, and apparently they're almost near their all-time high again kind of thing. Or oh, so. wow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it also d- just depends on the political will to do it, because that, that, doesn't really seem to correspond to whatever the reality on the ground is sure. <laughs> you know like it doesn't it, you know it, if 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 places decide no we just can't do this anymore we're not going to lock down anymore you know like what yeah what what choice do we have in the matter so mm-hmm. do you think like illinois it would be sort of closer to more likely to lock down i guess or would they just be at this point kind of like or, I know, don't know. You know. That's a good question. I, I, I don't know what the the um, the trust the science crowd is saying right now, um, mm-hmm. because that's what they would do probably. Just yeah. Illinois being how it is, uh, whatever whatever the consensus is there is probably what would happen here. Sure. Um, but yeah. I I they don't know what that quick is. Quick to do it in the first place. Mm-hmm. They were pretty like. Uh, you know, they they jump to like full lockdown type stuff pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but ours was, were never yeah. like super restrictive in terms of like it would be like restaurants and movie theaters and stuff closed, but it wasn't like you can only be out between these. Like they they don't do curfews or anything like that anymore. Yeah, you know? I mean so, they did do that during the uh, BLM protest, but that was that's a different. Yeah, issue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Thousand Year Reich still uh, or not Thousand Year Reich. Uh, Reich, Tom. Thousand Year uh, Quarantine. He said the quiet still. part loud. Yeah, yeah it's uh, I don't know. It's still a possibility. I'm not dead yet. Yeah. Oh well. I don't know. Uh, you know. I, again, uh, I said this when Mike, Mike was on, but like, I'll just do whatever they tell me to at this point. Just gonna you know, <laughs> whatever. I don't know. If they're like, you can't go outside again for the rest of your life, I'll be like, well, whatever. <laughs> that was fine. <laughs> yeah. I rem- take away the internet, I'd be pretty... Yeah. That- turn into like a big resistance guy <laughs> about that, I think. But anything else, like whatever. Sure. I'll eat the bugs. <laughs> yeah. Um, we were hoping to maybe go on a, a short like weekend road trip sometime later this summer. So... Uh, I, you know, that would be nice if that could happen before, mm-hmm. you know, if any lockdowns are going to happen, I hope we get that uh, little trip to Southern Illinois in before we, before, before we can't leave our houses again, but mm-hmm. we'll just have to see. Donald, do yeah. you know if the, um, are Canadians allowed to come to the U.S. right now via the land border or is it just air? Yeah, just air. Which is a strange rule, but Very I guess they're like totally yeah. separate uh, things. And they also weren't like negotiated directly with the United States at all kind of thing. Oh, so, okay. Like for some reason, which is just, that's a that's a failure right there. But, but anyways, but like, uh, yeah, so we're opening up our border, I think, maybe something like August 6th or something like that to mm. land border. But then the American land border won't be open, I don't think, until at least August 21st or more. And, uh, yeah, but you can fly into the United States or Canada either, you know, both ways. Um, and so uh, that's fine. I think it, I, I don't know. I haven't really read into too much into it, but I think it has something to do with like tour buses or something or like people, mm. someone said like cross border workers. Cause there, there are a, lar- a large number of people that at least used to have jobs that like were just basically like, you know, you would live in Windsor, Canada and then go over to Detroit. Mm-hmm. And stuff like that mm-hmm. and um you know, or something similar like that you know where it'd be along the border and it would just be there's right. there's you know thousands and thousands of people that do that and also lots of people that live on one side of the border half the year and things like that oh really yeah like i would say i think they said it was something like eight hundred thousand to like a million people like canadians go south for at least like a few weeks every year and stuff like sure. that. So yeah, I believe that. And uh, so there's just stuff like that where they just want to. I think that basically, like the way that it works, the rules are so sort of loose that it's like it. It basically like being that you'd have to let people constantly crossing the border back and forth at that point, kind of thing. You can't kind of do it halfway, I guess they're saying. So. Hmm. Um, it, it it is open now. I mean, to essential traffic or something. But yeah, I guess I think there's something to do with it that the airport they're thinking that, that somehow that's more like a choke point that you can kind of control as compared to just like tour buses and stuff like that. I guess so. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I was thinking about that with the ground travel. That's yeah, yeah. I don't know how you would enforce that without getting kind of crazy with it. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I'm not sure really how that works. It, it is. It does seem kind of silly, but like, uh, um, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I because I, uh, yeah, they they just approved that uh, baseball's coming back though, which is nice. Oh. So they they have like a natural in uh, national interest exemption or something. Uh, so on the thirtieth, I think is the first game, back. Um, cool. So you, in the Sky Dome. So. Uh, I might go to that maybe later in August or something like that to a game. So that'd be nice um, to see at least one or two games this year. So that'd be nice. So, you know, otherwise they've been playing in uh, Buffalo and then before that in uh, Dunedin, Florida. So, yeah. (laughs) Interesting. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, should we jump into these topics that people in the Discord have been suggesting we talk about? Sure. Sure. Um. Okay, so the first one is from Harbinger. Uh, he wants to hear about Central Asian cooking. 
Well, yeah, let's just go one by one. So first off is Central Asian cooking. Well, can you believe that I just made two dishes tonight Mm -hmm. from the Samarkand cookbook that you got me? (laughs) Yeah, and they were very good. I loved them. Sorry if that was really loud. (laughs) I I loved them, yes. So um, this cookbook... uh, is called Recipes and Stories from Central Asia and the Caucasus. And so, Tom, what did we make for my folks the other weekend? Oh, I made the, it was like a white fish with a um, dill yogurt sauce on pilaf mm-hmm. and um, glazed beets and beet greens. And what was the other and thing? And the, the uh, what was it called? Oh, like, the sweetie hottie salad. <laughs> yeah, sweetie hottie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It was like a tomato and onion salad that has um, chili flakes and um, salt and also a bit of sugar on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why it was called sweetie hottie. <laughs> mm. I don't know what the actual name is, but that's what the, the translator note said. I think it was like an Uzbek salad or something like that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, the thing I the things I made today were I don't know how this is actually pronounced, but it looks the way from from how it's written, it looks like it's called pali. Um, it's Georgian. Georgian. The Georgian language is famous for tons of consonant clusters, where there will be like five consonants in a row with no vowel in sight. So this one's a little easier than that, but. Anyway, it's a dip of um, greens, and I used um, beet greens and Swiss chard today. Uh, greens and walnuts, basically, with some herbs and spices and, you know, like green onion and garlic and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it came out great. I loved it. It was really good. We ate it with some rye bread. <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, And then Tom picked up some... Um, Russian chicken sausages, chicken frankfurters uh, at the grocery store today. So we fried those up. And then I also made a grated zucchini salad with um, poppy seeds and lemon. And ooh, it was so good. It was so good. I'm going to be making that like a lot more. (laughs) It was really, really good. And it's supposed to be with pine nuts, but I use sunflower seeds because I'm cheap. So, yeah. But it was great. You, you know, I, I think that it would work with the pine nuts or the sunflowers. You could probably use all kinds of different stuff. Yeah. It was so, so delicious. Um, so, yeah, I'm like slowly working my way through this 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 cookbook. Um, I'm not sure exactly what, uh, what Harbinger wanted us to touch on, but... Um, that's what it called to mind because <laughs> I the the timing is great for that question because the, we have been cooking through this um, and I there's a couple of other cookbooks that I have that I I don't usually cook from cookbooks I mostly just do my own stuff and I don't like measure or anything like that so um, this is kind of a new uh, task for me I decided I have so many cookbooks I like, why not start working through them and, you know, branching out, making stuff that you don't already make all the time. So, yeah, I I really, really love uh, Central Asian food. So I'm, I'm, you know, having fun and I'm glad that Tom is my willing guinea pig here. Cool. I love Central Asian food, too. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm happy with this little experiment. <laughs> I mean, a lot of these dishes are kind of new, right? Like... They're new to me, yeah. And um, you know, I I like what I've had from Central Asian cuisine and everything, but it's kind of fun to like, I don't know, just explore it a little bit. Yeah, Something and new. also like the I I kind of am liking like the salads and stuff like that because most yeah. of the food that I have had is from Central Asia is um very like meat heavy meat and and like rice and bread, um. Mm-hmm. Which is fine. I mean, I that I, I love that stuff too. But um, this is like a lesser known part of it, like something that you wouldn't necessarily... It's not like... These aren't like ambassador dishes. Like, it's not like, oh, this is the national dish of, you know, Tajikistan or something. You know what I mean? Like, they're like a little bit... 
they're like the accompaniment. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that that's nice that I, you know, have a glimpse into, uh, you know, less commonly showcased dish- dishes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I guess my only contribution, if uh, if Xinjiang counts as Central Asia, which yeah, is, sure. some people do, yeah. um, uh, then I I remember when I first got off the plane and then, you know, was driven into the city, um, mm-hmm. they took me to like this bazaar uh, with uh, that was, you know, traditional Uyghur food and stuff and... Uh, mm-hmm. Um, I got some sort of lamb dish or something kind of thing. And I don't think I had eaten lamb until uh, like since I was a kid kind of thing. I used to love it when I was a little kid, apparently. Oh. But like hmm. uh, um, uh, I probably hadn't had it since then kind of thing. Yeah. So I just, you know, I tried that and it was pretty good. But it's one of those things where when I eat something like I, I can only try like a little bit of a new thing kind of thing at a yeah. time. I couldn't just like wolf it all down and stuff. And <laughs> yeah. I was hungry. Um. Which was pretty cool. And yeah, there's some cool stuff like that. But um, I also remember, though, that one day I was just like tired and kind of like, I don't know, I just kind of like a, a bit stressed because I was out in the middle of nowhere, kind of, well, in my mind kind of thing. Like, and yeah. And, uh, um, and uh, so I got up and uh, it was like before my tour guide or something I was supposed to show up or something. But basically, I was on my own for a meal and mm. I was out there and you know, not a lot of English at that time kind of thing. And, and, and so I had to kind of like sure. figure out what I was going to do. So what I did is I went into uh, a fast food restaurant, which was basically like just like a, not a McDonald's clone, but kind of like that kind of thing, like a Burger King kind of thing or something uh-huh. like that kind of thing. But just, just like a, a regional slash Chinese chain. Uh-huh. And uh, I just pointed and got uh, nuggets and fries nice uh, in, that's resourceful in, in central asia so and uh, and you know i thought that was funny that like i i am that guy basically like, that, like <laughs> the guy that want like that found out that they had like a mcdonald's in the vatican or something and i'm like oh, <laughs> well so. yeah i mean i don't know what i would do in that situation probably something so, like <laughs> yeah. i would have no way to communicate of course why not go to something yeah. where you can at least have a chance yeah, I mean, I hope it was chicken nuggets. I guess that that's the thing. I don't, I don't know what it was, but it, it tasted like chicken nuggets. So I think I would that, so, yeah. yeah, I think you're you're all right. <laughs> I've never had Uyghur food before, but I've heard it's really good. Yeah, well, we've we've had lagman. Doesn't that count as as Uyghur? I I guess so. I I have I've always like thought of that as like a more of the like Uzbekistan uh, region, but yeah. I guess they have it in. In, uh, you know, the weaker areas as well. Yeah. I've had some Xi'an food, but not Xinjiang. But mm-hmm. I, 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 the, the commonality there is like the cumin lamb stuff. They've got, both of them mm-hmm. have that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uyghur food is kind of its own thing, I think, more than a lot of these other places. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You, you like know, it's so pretty distinct. Why. Yeah, I think it's, it's pretty heavily Chinese influenced. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it's still got a lot of the kind of like Central Asian staples and yeah. you know the kind of basic concepts of the of the dishes and stuff. So I don't know, it's a pretty cool combo. Yeah, yeah. I've heard good things about Xi'an too, in, in um, about like their Muslim quarter and stuff and some of the food there. So I think that'd be cool to visit. I don't know, like next time I go or something. So yeah. Do you have any general plans? for like when and how you'd like to go well i'd like to uh sort of kind of move up the maslow period of pyramid of needs or whatever kind of a bit kind of thing <laughs> like i want i want to like get you know my own place and and uh, have like a stable income and all that kind of stuff and and then once i'm at that point sure I'll go back so and okay uh, gotcha. i think it'd be i mean at the very least it'd be neat to go back like in 2025 or something like that, because that would be 20 years. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. So that would be neat to see that, Shanghai That would be again. cool. And uh, that seems like a reasonable target, too. So you know. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be cool. All right. So, yeah, let's move on to the next one. Uh, okay, well, this one is a little bit unfortunate, but how is biking going this summer? Oh, it's not. <laughs> I, I don't know if I... 
if this is uh, something we've already talked about at some point, but my bike got stolen at the end of last summer and uh, I was trying to replace it at the beginning of spring um, to try to go to, uh, there's a place in Chicago called Working Bikes that um, it's all used bikes. It's just like rehabbed uh, bikes that they, you know, spruce up and, and sell. And I generally like to, like, Bikes are one of those things that you really don't need to get new. There's certain things, you know, it kind of behooves the user to get them new. But a bike, I mean, there's stuff from the 70s still working absolutely fine. You don't need to buy a new, new one. Um, so I was trying to get used. And uh, then we had to move. And that started taking up all of my time. We did so much, uh, you know, research and, and seeing places and everything falling through. So that took up pretty much all my time and energy, and I could not uh, devote anything to getting a bike. Um, And now they're all gone, because that's how that works. You kind of have to get one uh, in the early spring. Um, And I, I, like, (laughs) a couple weeks ago, I went to their website again to just see what they still had available. And I actually thought it was broken, because there were, like, ten bikes. Oh, Um, yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it was... I was like, why isn't this loading? Oh, yeah. They just don't have anything anymore. And apparently there's um, like a worldwide bike shortage right now. So. Hmm. Uh, that's, that's funny. I don't, I, well, it's because yeah. of the, it's because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember last summer uh, I, I went to go get my, like my inner tube burst and I had a flat tire. So I went to go um, to get that replaced. And while I was there, I was talking to some of the other customers and, there were all of them were saying the same thing that that it was like you know they had ordered put it was on back order for like five months and then it finally came in and it was costly and that kind of stuff so that was last summer and i guess the same is true this summer so um i get really upset thinking (laughs) about it i really 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 miss riding uh that was like a big big part of my life um so uh, I don't really hold out much hope of that happening this summer, but um, hopefully I can uh, now be prepared. And if I need to order something, it's okay if it takes a few months if I do it over the winter, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's that's my plan. But I, sure. I really miss it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't... I. <laughs> I finally like like lodged a formal complaint with the 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 company that was responsible for it and I'm in I'm talking with them now but I it took me that long I like I I don't like yeah. complaining sure. yeah. <laughs> So so I was like yeah it took me a long time but now I finally um you know we'll see if they can do anything for me it would be nice if they can because it was their fault but we'll we'll see mm-hmm. we shall see Sure yeah. So I don't know. We, we will, uh, the thing with, with you is like the measurements are a little bit unusual, so it can't just be any <laughs> random bike. So like, yeah, that's what? true. I'm very short and especially, well, no, I'm not short. My legs are really short. So, uh, I need bikes that are usually reserved for large children or small people. <laughs> Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, that was another reason. It was sad that my old bike went away because it was perfectly sized for me. So, yeah, that's true. I can't just hop on any bike and have it work. Yeah, well, we'll just wait for the next circus to come into town and see if they got any bikes we can grab. That's a great idea. You know, you're resourceful (laughs) and so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Okay, the next question is, how's the community garden? Oh, so that, um, that's been going well. Yeah, yeah. You remember the stir fry I made earlier this week? We had what was in there from the stir fry? There was uh, radishes and radish greens, zucchini, eggplant, um, mm-hmm. and uh, some herbs. herbs. Yeah, it was uh, Thai basil. So that mm-hmm. was all from the. I mean, I put other things in there too, but uh, all of those were from the from our CSA. So yeah, that's been treating us very well. We don't have to spend as much at the on produce at the store, and 
the greens that I made today, that was also from the CSA. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's very nice. They're, they're very, they're sweetie pies there. So it's nice to see them every week. And, uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's been going good. I'm glad that they're still doing well. They seem to have slightly more money on hand because they have like a big water tank that they cork and uncork to wash vegetables now. So <laughs> I'm glad they're they're moving up in the world. So yeah. Yeah, we were talking to somebody um and I guess they were familiar with that garden because like their old boss who was kind of like one of these like hippie CEO types uh would donate to them quite a bit. And uh, they, he told us that the uh, apparently that garden like has a plot of land set out for like the teen Maoists in the neighborhood. Oh yeah. So I don't know. I I just thought I would, you know, let the people know. If that's going <laughs> well, I just want to the 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 garden is uh, there's two chunks of it. There's one part of it is Global Gardens, which is the uh, organization that gives plots to um, refugees and that's where we are getting our produce from the rest of the garden is like individual plots that get rented out um, and that's that's one of those the the, the teen Maoist ones is, is one of those mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah I'm just trying to say not affiliated <laughs> 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 but yeah yeah it's been really good um they had some cucumbers past couple of weeks that have been really nice. Mm-hmm. Like they, uh, they just taste a lot more cucumbery than yeah. the stuff you get at the store. You know, I'm I'm hoping that their tomato harvest is enormous this year. I I can never mm-hmm. get enough fresh tomatoes, so that that'll be really nice if if we get a bit of that. Yeah, and the eggplant last week was pretty young and <laughs> yeah. not really quite ready. So uh, maybe <laughs> maybe this week or next week uh, we'll get some nice ones. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, all right. And then another one here is future goals. Uh, future goals for all of us. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't have uh, terribly many of those. <laughs> uh, but we've already kind of touched on th- some of those with, with Donald. Um, and and even with me, right? Like I was talking about us trying to have a, like a long weekend in Southern Illinois. That's, that's mm-hmm. a future goal. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I don't know what sort of, uh, if this person means, you know, a week from now, five years from now, by the end of your life, uh, I'm not really sure, but does anything come to your mind, Tom? Oh, uh, well, we got the ball rolling on getting rings so the the marriage train is like slow leaving the station here. Come on, this is it, humans walking could lap this train like eight <laughs> times. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Things just keep coming up, and it, it sort of like takes a low priority because it's not anything urgent. I don't know. Yeah, that's, I'll, I'll, I think I'll it's jump more on that this week. I have a lot of time coming up. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That would be good. Yeah, it 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 is our fault that making it low priority all the time. But yeah, yeah, I guess for for me, I like uh, they just reopened gyms here, so uh, one of my goals is to like start to exercise more, kind of thing, you know, a bit. Nice. I have been here and there, but like just to not like you know not rigorously enough to you know like actually do anything, kind of thing, you know. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'd like to get back into that if I can. And uh, that'd be great. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. And then, uh, yeah, and also work on reading a lot more if I can, kind of thing. Like instead of just mm. being on the internet and stuff. Which, I mean, even then, like, uh, I mean, my time that I've been using uh, the internet has actually gone down a lot over the last few weeks and stuff. Oh, good um, for you. But like. Uh, Hopefully for good reasons and not just because you were going crazy with the with the family <laughs> visiting. Well, it, it, it may be half and a half. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but um, I have a lot of books that I have piled up that I'm really excited about kind of thing, like just different things that I want to get into. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'd like to get through those and maybe we can do more episodes on books and stuff in, in the future that be you know, I've read. And 
Yeah, I don't know, just uh, stuff like that. And also, you know, get back into writing more regularly and stuff. And um, yeah, so we'll see. It's hard, though, because for anything for like writing, it like it just uh, it feels like there's either like sort of a trite instant take that uh, you can kind of have, which is like, I don't know, it'd be something like, you know, Biden says he's not going to raise this or that, this tax, but he should because that's the socialist thing to do or something. Because, you know, stuff like that is just like, you kind of need like a constant churn of articles like that out there, I guess, just to like, you know, give your side, you know, your, your, your thing, like just someone has to do it basically. But I, yeah, to I have keep no, it flowing. I have no interest in doing any of that kind of thing. And then yeah. the other end of it is like, you know, I, I researched this topic for two years and here's a lot of interesting things I have to say, which is uh, I'm not really in that zone either kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's like, I'm not like, you know, I learned Serbian to do this article or something. Yeah, I'm not going yeah. to be able to do that really. And uh, so I have to figure out something in between that kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, pro- that is probably like sort of funny too, but like, uh, so that like I can use those skills and then. So I don't know. It's just that's that's been hard because it's hard to like sit down and be like, I have like a, you know, a, a Google Doc or whatever with just like ideas for articles and stuff. But like, I always look at it and I just get like this sour feeling. I'm like, these, <laughs> these are not good kind of thing or something. Like that. <laughs> and uh, so I don't, I don't know. So I was kind of in a rut with that kind of stuff, and I have to get back into actually, you know, I've had a lot of good excuses for not doing it, but now I'm gonna have to, <laughs> you know get on uh-huh. top of it so yeah that's good yeah that's that is a difficult niche to because like you have to kind of create the niche right because you yeah. say like it's as you say there's 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 the the daily grind type stuff the the take machine and then there's the the very academic style deep dive um and it's kind of kind of have to carve your own space in the middle there mm-hmm. um are you trying to do that by topic or more like style uh, or or like format, and then you would kind of decide on the topic after that? Um, I'm not sure, really. I don't, I'm not. I'm not really sure. Just because, uh, um, like, I I have been thinking of different topics and stuff. I kind of have like sure. a style in mind, I guess, kind of thing of just, uh, you know, I I don't know. It, it, it's hard because. When I think of jokes, I just think of like a joke kind of as a, as a flippant thing a lot of the time, right? Like yeah. I just kind of think of it as like a something that I just throw together as like a concept or something like that and just put it out there. And I have no real, I don't know, I, I'm kind of like where Twitter kind of maybe hurts me in a certain way where I have no yeah. real urge to monetize that at all. Like I don't have no real, like I was lucky with like Harper's and stuff where they wanted that kind of some of those kind of jokey things that I could put together pretty easily. Um, that was nice to be able to do, but it's like, even if that continued on, it'd be hard to see where it would go up for years kind of thing. Like it was just, uh. it was kind of like, a, you know, if I, if uh, I, I don't know, I, I could, I could piece together stuff here and there, but to do, do it consistently for publication is hard. So I have yeah. to kind of like do more serious kind of things. Um, more serious, at least in the topic or something like that. Like it like relates to actual real life instead of just totally figment of my imag- imagination kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I don't know. Yeah. And I also, the other thing is too, I, I get really angry sometimes when I'm reading about some of the stuff I want to write about or something. Sure. Too. Like, uh, I don't know. So I have to kind of dial it back a bit and think about what I actually you know, would be useful to write about and stuff. So anyways, I'm not sure how interesting that is, but it's just like, that's just, that's what I'm kind of dealing with kind of thing. So, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Just going back to the exercise thing you were talking about, that's been something that's been on my mind too. I think I need to get the ball rolling on that again. I know I've mentioned that before on here, so I feel like bringing it up again and still not really having gotten going <laughs> sure. with it is like a good sign that it's like, yeah, time to do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's been on my mind. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Not, not a whole lot besides that. I've, I've uh, been feeling pretty good about how this whole like trading stuff has been going. I feel like I'm uh, kind of like have a little, 
I don't know if I have like a system exactly, but I feel like I'm at a point where it's like productively boring. Like I'm not getting emotionally caught up in anything like the Mm. charts, you know, Mm -hmm. going up and down. I kind of like just pick a spot that I like that I kind of feel like I know where I I have like a a high confidence level in terms of like what I can expect the price to do at that point and then enter there, take profit at a certain point, and then I just like don't really concern myself about it and in the meantime and that's been working out for me pretty well so slowly kind of clawing back some of the uh some of the losses that i took on that big crash and mm-hmm. yeah i don't know uh it's possible things just skyrocket again later this year so maybe it'll it'll just kind of come easy but mm-hmm. yeah i don't know that, that's that's been going pretty well cool yeah and uh i said this to you earlier but like i just uh it you know, I'm just in, I'm just plugged into sort of like long term kind of things, but like, uh, yeah, I went down. I think my whole thing went down about like two percent or something like that in one or two days last week, and then now it's up three percent or something. So it's it feels good to be like back to where you know, or like at a, at sort of like top of where I am. So it's like, you know, making some money there, but yeah, it's like a I have to kind of just ignore that and just let it ride for years. I think so. You will see. Cool. Okay. So let's move on to the next question here. Uh, this is about staying cool in the summertime. <laughs> so yeah, that's, it's been kind of brutal on uh, some of these days lately. It's been so humid here. What's the uh, question? Is it just expound on this? It, it just says staying cool in the summertime. It's not really a question. <laughs> All right. I guess um, how to stay cool in the summertime would be my guess. What are okay. We doing to stay All right. cool? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I've been fighting you a little bit on having the air conditioning on. I, I want it off more, more often than you do, <laughs> but, uh, it, it has been very, very humid recently. So I'm, I'm not complaining like today, but I, I will say one of my, one of my best tips, if you don't have air conditioning is, uh, Hopefully everyone who who doesn't have air conditioning already knows this, but it's to um, to point your fans, your window fans inward um, at night and outward during the day because uh, at night you want the cold air, well, relatively cooler air coming in and uh, mm-hmm. keeping you cool. But uh, during the daytime, it's hot outside, uh, probably hotter than inside your home, so uh, you don't, pulling that air in is not going to help you out. So if you, uh, if you push that air out, then it becomes a a slightly cooler inside. So that's, that's that's my tip. Yeah. Closing like blinds and stuff during the day. Yeah. Very important. Which is, I was just talking with someone on Twitter about this. Shout out to Jerry. Um, that, uh, it, it, you, it's very good to do that, if, especially if you live in like a very bright, very hot place to uh, to block out the the light. It'll definitely help keep things cooler. But it makes me so sad to be without sunlight during the day. Mm-hmm. Like it just affects me really badly. <laughs> yeah. Just like mood wise, you know, it makes me so sad. But you'll save a bunch of money. Hmm. Yeah, I I used to not have air conditioning in most places that I lived in. Um, yeah. it, 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 I would just, yeah, I, my body would just, especially like once I gained weight and stuff like, yeah, it just, uh, I, I would just feel like I would just shut down. Like I wouldn't be able yeah. to do anything. And, yeah. uh, um, I ended up, uh, my parents a few years ago got a heat pump thing, which works basically as an air conditioner as well. And, uh, it has, you know, my health in the summer is so much better now, basically because of that. Yeah. So. I really, really notice it very, very quickly if I'm outside and stuff and it's humid and things. It seems yeah. to be mostly the humidity that bothers me, I guess. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. And then uh, um, anyways, yeah. So that it – and looking back at it now at like, you know, I'm thinking of like my mood or my mindset or something like that back a few summers ago and stuff when I just didn't have it or anything. I must have been like – just totally out of it. Like I have no idea how I, how I was surviving kind of thing, that kind of thing. So that's yeah. one thing about moving out is that I have to, you know, it has to be a nice enough place that it has some sort of way that I can, 
yeah keep it cool and stuff otherwise it's just uh, i'm not going to go back into like one of my terrible yeah. <laughs> apartments or whatever where like i just was cooking alive kind of thing so you know yeah it's and you know it it really does weight makes a huge a huge difference i don't know yeah. like it, <laughs> it's not it doesn't seem like you know losing or gaining five ten pounds should make that much of a difference but it can between that sort of like stupor that you can get into i i remember a few years ago i went to visit one of my friends um downstate and i i like you say i couldn't function i i yeah. like not only because you can't sleep so if you can't sleep then you're kind of like zombified during the during the day but even aside from that i just like couldn't do anything except be miserable that was sure. like yeah. where all of my mental energy was I like couldn't do anything and yeah. then I I discovered that he actually had air conditioning like central air in his house but he just didn't like to turn it on and I just kind of like stared at him for a little while and then I just like shuffled <laughs> off and yeah. sat somewhere else like I just <laughs> I didn't know what to do <laughs> sure. um but yeah. uh yeah it can be pretty pretty terrible I I, I I'm not a huge air conditioning person like i don't like use it super often or keep it really cold or anything like that but when you need it it's really really nice to have it there (laughs) really really nice Mm -hmm. i I think i'm kind of like that too i i just my like hands and feet have been getting really hot (laughs) they do yeah they're like (laughs) i just end up spending like all day looking for like cold metal to, or whatever or a tile to just put my feet and, and stuff on just to kind of cool do. them off with. that's funny yeah my my feet uh and hands tend to be cold so yeah i don't know it's the opposite but yeah yeah he mine too donald but he sure. is he is boiling i don't know he he's already a furnace in general but when it's hot out yeah like he, it's scary because like you he could put your his hand on you and you'd be like do you have a fever you know like it's really <laughs> really hot mm-hmm. yeah so. and i'm i'm like same thing as you were describing don like when it's hot i i just start to like shut down like my brain doesn't work as quickly i feel like just yeah. kind of half asleep sure. it, it's yeah. just really uncomfortable and then i'm kind of just waiting for the day to pass and uh, yeah and I just i don't know i'm yeah, not trying to live like that it's not good um anyway you showed me that little trick of like soaking my feet <laughs> made, made a little like foot bath thing or whatever <laughs> i did make you a foot bath um yeah <laughs> and that, I that does help heated it up in like five minutes but <laughs> it was nice and refreshing and you know it just helps to if you have some water there and you can keep your feet in it like that that tends to help you regulate your entire body temperature and another thing you can do you wouldn't let me do this to you because you felt it was fussy but if you have um any sort of um like minty cool uh, type thing like like peppermint oil um, or like menthol or anything like that if you put it on the back of your neck um, it gives you like a, a false sense of of feeling cooled off <laughs> so if you're ever like super super hot you can put a little bit on the back of your neck and just walk around like that and it helps you f- even though it doesn't actually regulate your temperature it helps you like have the illusion of feeling a little bit cooler so it's a it's a tiny bit of relief mm-hmm I remember in Asia, they would talk about like how they eat spicy food to help them sweat and stay cool and stuff, but they have all kinds of odd ideas about like drinking hot things to, you know, like that's yeah, good for I you mean, when it's hot. Yeah, I mean, it's out. true. If you eat and drink things that are hot in temperature, you will sweat more and consequently, I suppose you will cool off. But you know what else cools you off? drinking something cold and not sweating <laughs> right that sure. also works so yeah. i kind of prefer that method yeah so th- that's our tips i guess <laughs> um, so we also have a request here for us to talk about those beans so i'm not sure if this is like a meme th- response or I if think... he is talking about the mayakoba beans or what. <laughs> who was it from the Yule Hog. Oh, yeah, that it is probably the the Mayakoba beans. <laughs> That's cool. Um, yeah, I think 
the Mayokoba or the Canary slash Canario or Peruano, Peruvian. They, they, they This is all the same kind of bean. They just have a lot of different names. Um, really, really wonderful bean. It's uh, kind of like an all-purpose bean that uh, has a mild but very pleasant flavor and uh, cooks up exceptionally creamy. So it's good not only on its own, but if you want to make refried beans, they're I, I would say they they even edge out pinto beans. They're they're a little bit better than than pinto beans uh, in terms of being refried. Certainly better than um, black beans for that purpose. Uh, might be my favorite bean right now. I, I'm I'm capricious with that, so I'm not going to claim it forever. But um, recommended them to Yule Hog, and he got some and. And he confirmed it, so it's not just my taste. You've got at least two votes of confidence. If you can find, they're they're uh, they're about the same size and shape as um, pinto beans, but they're not spotted, and they're kind of like a pale, like kind of like cream slash yellow uh, in color um, before you soak and cook them. But yeah, they're a really fantastic bean. So everyone if you can find them they i will say they are pricier than most beans if you buy them dry like i I don't know about canned i've never seen them canned Uh, i'm talking about dry beans but um when i pointed that out in the discord people were laughing at me because they're still like you know three dollars a pound instead of 99 cents a pound or something like that yeah they're not outrageous no they're not they're not outrageously priced at all but uh but they are quite a bit more expensive than other beans so i'm just saying don't get sticker shock okay Mm. but they're (laughs) still they're still affordable so don't worry sure yeah we've made a, a lot of good things with those those beans lately we made um yep uh what was the thing we made the other night with them um, I'm not um, sure. Yesterday? Because those weren't, those were just Pintos. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was just Pintos. But we could make it with Mayoko, but we made a, like a vegetable bean, I don't know what to call it, like a chili t- style thing, like with chipotles and like it was a stew. It was a thick stew. Yeah, I guess a stew. Yeah, I, I made like a, a sauce with peppers and pumpkin and um, some vegetables and then you cook the beans with a little bit of rice, not like a, not like rice and beans, but just like a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we just combined them together, and it came out pretty stewy, I would say. Yep. Yeah, the, I will say about the pumpkin, canned pumpkin is a really delicious, cheap way to um, to kind of bulk out uh, stews and even sauces. I, I'm in a food chat uh, with someone who. Um, just recently posted that he used um, he used canned pumpkin to uh, for like a gratin to like he gratined other vegetables mm. and like you know topped it with um, I think it would be cheese and baked it and stuff like that. But if you don't want the entire sauce to be just fatty dairy and you'd like to still have it like nice and thick with body but not as like heavy and fatty go for pumpkin i haven't tried that yet but um i definitely put it into stews and stuff like this because it just i mean it tastes delicious it's added um heft and it's added fiber for your diet if you're concerned about that um yeah i i love i love pumpkin so yeah that was a good stew and we we we've been whenever i get to have um squash corn and beans in the same meal i always talk about the three sisters so yeah, mm. that's the <laughs> we did yeah. that yesterday. We had two forms of squash, pumpkin and zucchini, and then the pinto beans, and then um, we also had corn on the cob on the side. So I've been loving corn on the cob lately. It's a classic for a reason. Mm. Yeah, good N- stuff. Now I want refried bean dip. I don't know. I'm, Hell yeah! I'm, I'm, I've been fantasizing about it while you were talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. I love it. All right, let's keep moving on here. Um, daily planning. Oh God, I <laughs> am the worst at this. I have I have nothing helpful to to say. <laughs> I really don't. 
<laughs> do you guys have you ever done anything like that? Like where you actually have to plan everything out by like the fifteen minute interval? Oh no. Whenever I try to do this I just I just freak out pretty quickly. Like, <laughs> yeah. This is the worst thing. I don't know. <laughs> I have to do this for other people at work a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's easier to do it for somebody else than it is to do it for yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I, I think like the things that I always keep in mind are like priorities and your limitations and then trying to be creative about that. So if you can kind of have in mind, like what are your specific limitations in terms of your time and maybe your energy or whatever other kind of factors there are. If you can like have a clear picture of what those are, it really allows you to get more creative with things and not just kind of like fall into patterns that maybe aren't the most efficient use of your time and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like if you know like, okay, well, I need this much time to do this thing, this much time to do this thing, but I can't do it here because of this other thing. Um, you know, if you if you can kind of like block it out a little bit, then you'll kind of realize like, oh, well, I actually have like this time here that I never considered as time that could be spent on this other project that's or true whatever. so mm -hmm. um that can be useful yeah i i generally I, i'm very thankful that most days i don't have a busy enough schedule at work that i that i need to do that i, I from time to time i do and it also depends on like how many projects are happening at the same time you know but um i don't often need to do that i usually have like a general idea of like morning, mid afternoon, and afternoon, and that's that's all I really need at this point. So, I'm I'm grateful for that because <laughs> mm -hmm. I can do it if I'm forced to. Um, but like Donald said, it just kind of like frazzles me out, stresses yeah. me out because I'm not I'm not good at uh, improvising when when things don't go according to plan. <laughs> mm -hmm. The the plan is like the only thing there for me. So. <laughs> So yeah, I'm not not great at dealing with uh, uncertainty there. So, mm -hmm. um, the other thing that comes to mind is like making things a habit. I think sure. really helps. Mm -hmm. So, if you have something that you need to do like every day or something like that, you should try to really be structured about it. So, I feel like that makes you more efficient about it. You kind of get quickly into like the the. Uh, the whatever mode you need to be in to mm -hmm. accomplish that task when you have it like set at a certain time or something like that in a certain place, you know, you kind of do it all the same way every time. Yeah. And I think that kind of makes you better at it each time. Because if then you, you don't have to put as much energy into the thoughtfulness of doing it. Yeah. It you know? becomes much more automatic. And then that is less of, it just, it's like less draining or something. Like yeah. you can kind of just do it without, feeling the stress of it yeah i'm also just not very good at just doing things that's always been like my mom is like that and she always would just tell me like when i would be like i don't know what to do about this she'd be like well just do that I'm like but i can't <laughs> <laughs> mm. it's like she doesn't get it like we're just function totally differently i'm i i know i'm the 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 loser in the situation she's very good at getting things done but mm. it is it is hard for me to so yeah like tom said getting in a getting in a habit where you don't have to put any energy into forcing yourself to do it where you just do it is the best w best way to get around that kind of thing yeah like i actually enjoy it when i can take care of stuff like you know like work or whatever like earlier in the day when i'm sort of like half asleep <laughs> kind of just like by the time it's done i kind of feel like like almost like i woke up from a dream you know like it, <laughs> I did, it wasn't really awake during it or something and so mm -hmm. once it's done it's like then my day starts whereas like if i'm just not doing anything in the first part of the day then like i'm actually like more conscious during the stuff that i really don't want to be, I can so. see that mm -hmm. that's funny yeah um so the next thing here is best herbs and spices Oh, I remember I I I tweeted a poll about this once because I've I have thought about the same kind of thing. I Okay, so let me I'm going to put to you three spices. 
and I would like you guys to rank them and also tell me if you think any other spices should be among these top three. So, these so this are, is your top three? They're not maybe my personal top three, but I think that they, well, you'll, you'll see. Okay. okay. So these are the three spices. Black pepper, cinnamon, and cumin. I'm not talking herbs. I'm just talking spices. How how would you rank those? Um, I would rank black pepper number one for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then maybe cumin and then cinnamon. Um, okay. Just because I agree. In terms of yeah. like what I use and stuff like that too. And okay. like what I like the most, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I put black pepper on a lot of stuff for like... Uh, like pasta and stuff like that so yeah yeah me too i put black pepper on almost everything yeah uh, yeah black pepper is like a really maybe a top five for me cinnamon and cumin i don't know like they're not they're not my favorite to be honest um cinnamon i feel like has its place i i like to use it as like a kind of a I don't know, what would you call it? Like a warming spice or something yeah. I think I've heard that referred to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like in a, in savory dishes, like I know that there's the, you know, you think of like cinnamon sugar and like dessert kind of context, but I I don't really make a lot of that kind of stuff. I'm, I usually just stick to like savory, you know, meals and stuff. So it's, it's part of like a marinade that I like to do with chicken. Um, I'll include it in things like that. And then there's stuff like um, nutmeg and allspice and even like clove and things like that that kind of I feel like are yeah those, those are, are all like one kind of category yeah and, yeah and uh, the other one was cumin I don't know I'm a little bit down on cumin recently more than than I generally am I don't know I I I agree that I I just remember when I posed this question I think I. I said like black pepper and and cinnamon were the kings of the spices and a bunch of people were like where's cumin what about cumin I actually don't find cumin that versatile um yeah I I agree in the same way that something like black pepper or even cinnamon is is versatile I would say I probably use cumin in a few more things than I use uh cinnamon in or at least more of it um but I still, I don't know, cinnamon is just such a great, I, it seems like a miracle to me. I can't believe something tastes that way. <laughs> it's just like so wonderful. <laughs> and that it's just like the inner bark of a tree. I don't know. It's just like, uh, it's just, it's, it just cool. it's such a cool ingredient. What a, what a beautiful flavor that we get to experience. I just think it's so nice. Um, I feel that way about dill. Yeah. But wait, 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 we're we're branching out into herbs now. This is okay, dangerous. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll stick with spices. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of people were showing love for um for cumin, so I just didn't want to to leave cumin out. And you know, to be fair, it is used in a huge variety of foods in a huge variety of cuisines too. It's like all over the world, you know. And didn't didn't we just uh. Didn't uh, the the tasting history guy say that uh, in ancient Rome it used to be salt and cumin on the table as opposed to salt and pepper? You know, like, yeah, like yeah. So there's this YouTube channel that we like to watch called Tasting History, and it's this guy that will find a recipe from history. Usually, it's like ancient Rome or something like that. You know, pretty, pretty or medieval old England like... or France or something. But he does. Yeah, it's he tries it's to go unusual. around the world, but it's usually like you, you know European antiquity. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's like stuff that is it's pretty odd compared to like modern food. You know, so it's not just like old timey ice cream or something like that. Although he, I guess he did actually just do an episode on it. <laughs> But, you know, it tends to be stuff that is, like, pretty bizarre sounding. It's kind of interesting. Or he'll he'll... just trace, like, an unexpected lineage of something. Like, what would a pizza have looked like 600 years ago? Guess what? It's not similar to a pizza of today. Something like that, you know? So, So what is it? (laughs) <laughs> sorry, sorry. Would it, would it like what would the pizza? Do you know or is that? Yeah, yeah. He he did one um, that I think was uh, maybe Venetian pizza from the 1500s or something like that, um, and it was a 
it was more of like a a bread like it wasn't saucy or cheesy um and it was like a double layered bread quite thick um and then at the end like when you brought it out of the oven you're supposed to sprinkle it with like rose water um so very different but it was part of what would be considered like the genealogy of pizza you know it wasn't just like yeah. oh it happened to have that name but it was really something different well it, it is you know you can trace it back that's cool um but i i didn't know this until a while like pretty recently that um you know vanilla is a new world ingredient so prior to you know colombian trade that was not an ingredient in european cooking um, which I guess I did know, but the thing that I didn't know was that people used to use rose a lot uh, to flavor desserts. Rose and lemon seem to be the big things that people used to use to add a little bit more complexity than just plain old sugar to mm -hmm. sweets. Um, and I didn't know that because, you know, rose in desserts seems like a very um, Middle Eastern and like South Asian, like the north part of uh, the subcontinent. It, that's that's what it calls to mind for me like that's it's those types of desserts you know mm -hmm. um but i guess it used to be really common in uh european cookery too so that's, that's interesting cool. but anyway yeah that's uh I'll, I'll link you to the picture of the pizza it just looks like a big baked dough <laughs> it, like but still in a circle <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i guess the uh the pizza the recipe he found which was like the earliest use of that word pizza mm -hmm. um it, it was a uh, a vatican thing it was in the papal court oh right. really yeah that's cool um, okay so um, i guess it was roman then not venetian yeah um hmm yeah i don't i don't remember the specifics but i do remember him mentioning that yeah um and also just on the vanilla thing i guess like we didn't know how to properly like cultivate vanilla very easily until very recently like in the past 50 years or so so it was like no a very it's it's not that recent it was it was in the i think like 1870s or something like that okay well something like that but anyway it was like a very rare expensive ingredient until they were able to like um you know i i, I don't even know what exactly they did but they were able to like uh cultivated in a way that was I think easily it's, harvestable. Yeah, I th it has to do with how it gets pollinated. Um right. and I Oh yeah, it took like 7 years or something for it to to I don't know exactly what the process is, but um but we have uh you know, we figured out how it gets pollinated <laughs> and can um fake that process now. But but yeah. for a while there they would try to import um vanilla plants all over the place uh hoping like oh maybe if we bring it to this other tropical or subtropical area we can cultivate it here and it just would never work until they figured out how to pollinate it and that's mm -hmm. why we have vanilla now vanilla is a very complex ingredient there's a lot of different compounds that go into making it taste like vanilla it's pretty cool cool yeah i'll have to check out that youtube channel that sounds good it is good, yeah. He's he 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 does good research. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Um. So I want to go back to the cumin. Oh, issue. yeah. Uh. So you picked up some coriander seeds today at the store. We I went did. to the store and got a bunch of stuff, and you ground them up, and it smelled really good. And I <laughs> just wanted to kind of say, like, I think uh, coriander is more is, is like i would rank it higher than uh cumin would you really cumin, yeah i kind of put cumin i don't know i feel like i begrudgingly put it in like mexican and indian food and stuff like that <laughs> like it sort of just needs to be there but i'm not like super stoked about it i agree actually i don't know why my attitude is like that but i agree <laughs> um coriander though like i can put a ton of that in all kinds of different things and i i don't know i think it does a lot of good work yeah, the to make something taste just um, like Afghan or Persian, it's really like all you have to do is add coriander and paprika to, to anything and it'll start. Like you can add other things and it'll enhance it. But if you have those two, and I should say I'll add black pepper too, it'll, you know, 
it, it's yeah, just going to taste like Maybe a little like rose that. water or those little black seeds or whatever, depending on what it is. Oh, yeah. Nigella. Those are so good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so have we spent too long or should we talk about herbs a little bit? Sure. Let's do herbs. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, Tom, what are your top three? Dill. Um... Hmm. I don't know. After dill, it sort of gets a little bit. Not sure. A mint. Hmm. Um. I know. I have my top three in a bag in the fridge right now. <laughs> I've been big on thyme lately. I don't know if that is a. If I would always put that in there, but I'll say that for now. Yeah, I love thyme. I really love it. It's also very versatile. Hmm. Donald, do you have any favorite herbs? No, not really. I don't know. I don't know enough about herbs to rank them or anything like that. So, yeah. Gotcha. Um, I would agree that dill is is one of them, but I would say um, parsley and cilantro are the other two for me. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about maybe cilantro over mint, but I think I m- mint isn't very versatile, but when, yeah. when it goes with something it like really yeah takes it to a different place i i I agree i really really love mint it's just not quite as versatile as cilantro cilantro i can put on you know almost anything and i love it and i love tons of it too like lots lots and lots of it it's like hard to to over cilantro something for me i've been liking cilantro more and more so i i'm kind of like uh I'm not used to liking it as much as I have lately, so I'm sort of like, <laughs> you know, trying to put it on more things and be like, oh, I actually really like that. Mm, I see what you mean. Yeah. I like parsley too, but it's sort of, uh, it has a, a pretty low ceiling, I think. How so? Like, does you it's can't put fine. it on a lot of things? or No, it's, it's just uh, never amazing, really. Like, um, I don't know. I, I would say... That it's it's a little different than the other two, but I like using it as a as a green almost like like making an entire salad out of parsley as opposed to just having a little bit of it. I I don't think that it really does that much when you sprinkle a little bit on top of a dish the way that um, mint or cilantro can do like that. It it doesn't pep up a dish in the same way, but mm-hmm. uh, but I love how. I love how chlorophylly it tastes. It just tastes so like just really, really fresh without being like minty or cool in that way, but yeah, just very, sure. very fresh. It tastes so fresh to me. So I really like how it can freshen up anything that you add it to. Uh, basil may need to be actually on there too. Basil is not, I, I love basil. I love it, but it's nowhere near versatile enough that I would consider it top three maybe not even top five (laughs) but i do love it um it's wonderful i just don't use it that often you know i think i may like basil more than mint no mint mint is way up there for me i love mint yeah i'm not sure anyway that's that's my thoughts on it (laughs) (laughs) all right what about what tom can i just ask tarragon yay or nay I don't really remember what it tastes like. It's been a long time. Okay. Gotcha. And sage is good. It's got a, I mean, there's only so much you can put it on, but it's, it's good where it's good. You know, I think it, it, it is required for certain things. Like you can't have breakfast sausage without sage. You can't Mm -hmm. have like, um, that classic roast chicken, um, or, uh, like chicken noodle soup type like poultry seasoning you can't have that without sage so there's a few things that you really have to have it there for but uh but other than that i you know it 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 also is pretty powerful like you have to be yeah like that and it's really off if it's not in the appropriate like a lot of these other dill or uh, these other herbs if you put them on something and it's not really a match, it's not going to like ruin it, but sage can just ruin something. That's true. All right. Um, herb thoughts. What else do we got? 
Okay, so the last one here on the Discord is foraging. And oh. I have no idea what to say about that. <laughs> um, not much of a forager. More of a hunter. Oh, shush. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever, uh, Donald, have you ever plucked anything in the wild to, no. to eat at home? No. <laughs> not even like a berry from someone's bush as you're walking past? Oh, no, no. Really? No. <laughs> I used to, <laughs> my neighbors across the alley from the house I grew up in um, used to grow raspberries uh, on the, on in, in the alley. Um, and I would always, I would always go and steal them, <laughs> which oh, yeah. I placated myself because they were growing in the alley, not in their backyard. So I was sure. like, this is public domain. This is, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not doing anything wrong. And I would just like gas myself up and try to tell myself I wasn't doing anything wrong. But I knew I was stealing their berries. So I would kind of like duck as I ran over there to... <laughs> anyway. That's funny. Yeah, it's always a sign that you're not doing anything wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I would love to be able to forage more than I do, but I feel a little bit um, unsafe doing it in a city because mm -hmm. I, I never know what the status of the land is anywhere. Like if there used to be, you know, a gas station there 15 years ago, like I, I have no idea, you know, if, if these places are contaminated or not. And of sure. course it's hard to get away from roadsides, uh, which are very contaminated just, from like tar and oil and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I don't do it as much as I want to, but I do see lots of like, you know, like a little bit earlier, there were mulberries everywhere and I was going crazy. Like just, I just wanted to pick them so much <laughs> and mm -hmm. collect all these mulberries. And I, I was trying to be wise and not do it. Um, but the other problem, and this is something that I don't think, I suspect that a lot of people in, my type of situation, meaning like in a, in an urban or suburban area, um, a lot of the places where you could ostensibly for, uh, forage are the forest preserves. Um, and you are not supposed to take anything from a forest preserve. You're not supposed to destroy any plants. You're not supposed to take anything with you. And a lot of times when I see that people have been foraging, like whether it's morel mushrooms or... Um, the big thing that people love to do is um, ramps, which are a, a wild form of leeks. Um, people go nuts over these things, and they are really delicious. But um, they're usually taking them from land where it would be really nice if we could continue to have them okay. uh, and to let them grow. Um, and, you know, Obviously, some level of harvesting is probably okay, but if everyone wants to do it and then no one is paying attention to how much is left or they're taking parts of plants that the plant can't regrow, like roots, for example, um, you know, it's something that you should consider if you ever want to, to forage anything, um, whether you're doing it in a place where you should be doing it and um, whether it's sustainably done or not. And obviously, I I don't really, it's not really about the legality of it, but more about the, just like, kind of like, stewardship, I guess, you know, like, like, don't, don't, don't harm the place that we're all here to enjoy. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, was I there a question? A lot of that. Oh, sorry. What? I was just going to say, I find a lot of the stuff that you just like randomly pick isn't even very good. Yeah. Like, you kind of need to... Like in, in Finland at my grandparents' house, there's certain like berry bushes and stuff that we know have good berries, so we'll pick from those. Uh -huh. But if you just like kind of walk around and like see some berries growing, like that, those aren't necessarily going to be very good. So that's true. I don't know. Um, I used to, when I went to school um, at the University of Illinois in Urbana Champaign, there's a there was a permaculture project there where people years earlier had kind of gone around to um, land that didn't belong to anyone and planted things that would be perennials like pawpaw trees 
or asparagus or cherry bushes or stuff like that so that like it was expressly for the purpose of like so that people could go around and just like forage safely you know Mm -hmm. so that was really cool because i got to have a lot of (laughs) and you know it was a it was a cleaner place it's not a city city so it it felt safer to to harvest that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. so that was really cool i i appreciated that project and i was like honored to to be part of continuing it and helping out that was cool so did you want to do the there's like a dino kale question or oh anything? yeah um he let's see so i had put out the call for topics and he replied and said maybe bullying and how it's similar and different from trolling and regarding that and other negative aspects to being online how you think kids ought to be raised uh, with the internet or without the internet, perhaps, Dennis says. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I was thinking about that. Donald, do you have any thoughts about um, (laughs) comparing and contrasting bullying to trolling? Yeah, I mean, I do. I I was thinking about this earlier, too, where I I have this sort of like jokey thing in my head where I I think of like trolls that are just... uh, basically trying to actively harm people, but that don't have like, uh, you know, don't have like goals or anything. I mean, I, or have like negative goals, I should say, not mm. don't have goals, but are, I think of them as like black hat trolls. Right, and, right. Uh, and uh, that they're like out there, like, you know, I think that is a lot like bullying. I'm not saying that it's like a punch up, punch down kind of thing really as much because uh, I think that like, you know, a lot of the times I'll antagonize people that, you know, are not necessarily, you know, powerful people or anything like that. Kind of thing. It's not <laughs> like that, you know. But like, uh, I don't know. There's something about that. There, I, I, it's like, I'm not sure that there's actually much of a difference between a lot of the time. Like, I think bullying. Uh, obviously, we have this idea that it's like, I guess, it's, there's like a vulnerability there. Like, it's like you're exploiting a vulnerability. Um, but, I mean, if I look back at some of the jokes that I'll make at people that are just like journalists I don't like or something. Like that kind of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, uh, it's, I, I will be rude to people that I'll look back and I'll go, man, I'm just being rude to them because my friends have decided that they're a person we're allowed to make fun of or something. Yeah. Like that kind of thing. It's not like, yeah, you know, it's kind of like, it's not, it's not bullying. I don't think because like bullying is like towards like someone that like is vulnerable or something like that I think, but like, uh, it's something like that. It's something like just being a jerk or something like that kind of thing. Like in yeah, the... I, I'm having trouble because I I don't think you can just have the word bullying be a stand-in for antagonism as as yeah. a as an entire concept. But I yeah. don't know what differentiates it specifically. You're talking about vulnerability. Um, I don't know. Is are, are there more criteria than that? Like Tom, do you? have any thoughts about like i don't know what bullying means really well what what comes to mind for me is that trolling is like you're in the stands at a baseball game and you're doing you're heckling you know like swing better 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 like you know (laughs) that kind of stuff is is that bullying like would anyone (laughs) seriously call that bullying sure i I don't know like it's relatively harmless it's someone who's like on who's putting themselves in public, right? Like they're, I don't know. I always follow like the, if you post, we shall roast kind of principle. Like <laughs> yeah, if, yeah. if, if you feel like, you know, you are vulnerable in saying something like to the, to where like just a negative comment is going to like have a actual negative effect on your life, then you probably shouldn't be putting it out there. You know, you shouldn't be taking that risk. Um, not to, that doesn't like justify people being malicious about it, but it's sort of like, it's kind of on you to take responsibility for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think like if we're going to have a, I think there should be a distinction and I think like things can't just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's trolling. Uh, mm-hmm. that you can, you can bully people online, I guess, but, um, b- bullying sort of has a kind of, uh, like a, almost like a stalkery kind of a I was going to say it. chronic there's yeah. like like chronic versus acute you know like you have to like you're, consistently you're do somebody. it <laughs> like one instance doesn't 
I would say most of the time, like one remark or one cruelty does not constitute bullying because there has to be a pattern, right? Yeah. And I think it seems like uh, these days, a lot the, the whole term of bullying, is it's getting stretched pretty thin where it's like anybody who kind of feels slighted or has their feelings hurt or something like bruised egos are just like quick to call everything bullying mm. and you know just because you somebody makes a comment about something that they didn't like you know it's clear that they didn't like what you were saying or they disagree and they're kind of like making fun of you about it or something that doesn't make it bullying you know mm. i think bullying has to kind of there's something else that has to be involved there to like take it to the level like if we're if we're gonna start to have this big crusade against bullying i think you need to like have a certain standard of where we're drawing the line at like what's bullying and what's just kind of shit talking or whatever you know yeah Yeah. i think one thing that uh seems like a general positive i don't really know because i'm not there but i i think there has been kind of a sea change in attitudes towards bullying in schools because i i think there is really truly honestly like people think of bullying as a bad thing now like Mm -hmm. everyone including people who like are (laughs) like what stereotypically would have been at the top of the pile you know in a good position to bully others uh formerly in schools i think that that really is genuinely like looked down on now i don't think it's as easy to um to get away with and i don't think people are as willing to turn a blind eye to it anymore so that's cool. That that's nice. Like, hopefully, that means like kids have like a good uh, sense of of you know like solidarity, like sticking up for one another, like saying, "Hey, you know, leave this kid alone" or something like that. Mm-hmm. So again, I don't know how it actually is. I have not been in a school since I uh, you know was a student, so I you know I don't really know. But that that seems pretty nice. Like that's that's a maybe one good uh, aspect of of um you know some of the attitude shifts that we've seen in recent years which to me are almost universally terrible uh, mm-hmm. but but that one sounds like a nice one <laughs> yeah i agree i i that does seem to be the case although i i suspect like like you i don't really know you know i think the only people that know are the like kids or mm-hmm. that are you know of that age right now but i just suspect that there, there's still the same kind of dynamics going on in some kind of way. Like it is, it it is good that it's you can't just like openly bully someone. Yeah. The way it, it, you know, let's presume that's the case. Like that you can't do that the way maybe you used to be able to. Uh, but I just imagine there's got to be other kinds of you know. It the, comes the out in other ways. motivations are, are yeah. still there. People right. are going to find ways to, right. to do that. So. so perhaps maybe the, the casual stuff that people did um, without really thinking, maybe that has been curtailed a little bit because of consciousness of that behavior. But but when it's because someone, like, if someone's, like, getting mistreated at home and then they come to school, they're still going to want to take it out on someone else. Or, you know, it's like, stuff like that. Sure. Like, those causes are yeah. not gone. Yeah, maybe that's why there's so many school shootings. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that one, I don't think that was intended to be the, the punchline that I interpreted it as, but that, <laughs> that was very funny to me. <laughs> you got to take the bad with the good. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess, yeah, the, the kid side of it for bullying, like... Uh, or internet trolling and stuff like that. Um, I have no idea. I don't know. I, I I feel very more and more like a stranger online to love this kind of stuff. Like uh, yeah, like uh, with uh, younger people and stuff. I don't know. I just uh, I don't know. I don't get the. I don't know. I just get I find I get confused very easily about like, priorities. <laughs> I just kind of feel it like I just go, oh, not my world, and yeah. I move along. Yeah. yeah. Are, there are adults that like complain about bullying and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's just like, get your fucking life together. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, kind of. But um, but going back to uh, Dino Kill's prompt, um, what about parents with children, with young kids? Uh, how do you... I, I don't have... Just as, as a disclaimer, I don't really have any thoughts about this, but in case you guys do, how would you raise 
a a moral person um who still has like a a decently thick skin um and uh isn't exposed to just the the worst of what can what a kid can be exposed to online he will be forged in flame <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i've started a troll academy and um, I, think that, like, I could maybe give them like special tuition or something like that kind of thing like because it's my own kid so they could like, you know they'd still owe me at the end of it like they'd still it, part of it be a loan. oh but, right like, but like, uh, yeah, I don't know. They, I, I could yeah. teach them in the ways of trolling, and okay. then uh, they'd be better equipped. Uh, so they, you know. so the idea is there to get out in front of it, to sure. to to teach them, and and like have them troll preemptively. Yeah, and and just to know all the strategies that they like. Sure. You know, they can see it coming. It's like you know, it's uh-huh. like it's like basically like kung fu kind of thing, right? Like you're just uh, sure. You're you're seeing the you're seeing the punch before the move punch, before it stuff. right yeah. exactly yeah so yeah and uh, then through that process they can become as successful as I am at life so yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing Don in like a classroom like pointing with a little you know pointer at a blackboard uh-huh. and being like rule number one don't feed the trolls <laughs> rule number two they are just losers who are jealous <laughs> living in their mom's basement. <laughs> yeah. Rule number three, block, report, and move on. Yeah. Just like all the lamest, like, <laughs> you, you know, non-strategies. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really have any ideas. I, I have no idea what it's like to raise a kid. So, like, th- this is, like, kind of above my pay grade, really. <laughs> I I don't I don't think I should be. But but you know when people ask you things about geopolitics, then that's okay because that that is where you have you know influence in life. So <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> my responses there are mainly like, what will annoy the most number of people? What can I say? <laughs> okay, well, why don't we wrap it up there for today? If that's cool. All right. Yeah. Sure. Um, Thanks for yeah. for the questions, everybody. And yeah. I, I think I probably got some more as uh, as we recorded, so maybe we can we can do that next time if there is a next time. Sure. Cool. Yeah, of course there will be. Yeah. God right, willing. Well, thanks for coming on again. <laughs> Thank you for having me. This was fun. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, I hope everyone's hungry after all that food talk. Oh yeah, I am. I get over <laughs> He's gonna eat a whole pot kitchen. of sage now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, With I, some cumin and salt on top. Yeah, I keep that around for ceremonies. I'm not really into it. <laughs> Appropriative ceremonies only, sure. please. Yeah. Yeah. Burning sage in the septic system just to <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you get go. the bad juju out. Sure. Yep. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening. If you'd like to catch a second episode every week, you can do that by going to our Patreon. Uh, you'll get access to the, the uh, premium episodes and the Discord where you can chat with us in our lovely communities and potentially send in questions and suggestions like uh, like what we took for this episode. Uh, if you want to send in anonymous questions, you can do that by going to the Twitter account at you can't win Pod, and you'll find a link to the Curious Cat in there. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys.